In a distant kingdom, there lived a princess named Zlata. She was very beautiful, smart and kind. She loved nature, animals and people. She often went to the forest to enjoy its beauty and tranquility. One day, when she was walking through the forest, she saw a large cave. She decided to look inside to see what was there. She didn't know that this cave belonged to ogres. Ogres were scary creatures that fed on humans and animals. They were very strong, angry and cruel. They hated everything that was beautiful and kind. They often attacked villages and towns, killing and kidnapping people. They lived in caves where they kept their trophies and food supplies. They were afraid of no one and nothing but one thing. They were afraid of dragons. Dragons were powerful creatures that possessed magic and wisdom. They were very rare and mysterious. They did not like to mix with other creatures, preferring to live in the mountains or on the islands. They did not interfere in the affairs of humans and ogres. As long as they did not violate their territory or threaten them, they could breathe fire, ice, or lightning, depending on their type. They were very proud and honest. They respected everything that was strong and brave. When Zlata entered the cave, she did not notice that two ogres were watching her. They were brothers named Booze and Goose. They looked very similar to each other. Both were tall, fat and hairy. They had big heads, small eyes, crooked noses and sharp fangs. They had long arms and legs ending in clawed paws. They were dressed in dirty and tattered robes made from animal skins. They carried large clubs made of wood and stone on their shoulders. Booze and Goose were very hungry, as they had not eaten for a long time. They decided that Zlato would be the perfect snack for them. They crept up behind her and grabbed her. Zlato was scared and screamed, but no one could hear her. The voters gagged her and dragged her into the depths of the cave. They were going to cook it over a campfire and eat it. But they didn't know that a dragon lived in this cave. His name was Azar. He was a fire dragon who could breathe flames. It was big and red, with a long tail and wings. He had golden eyes, horns, and scales. He was very wise and kind. He didn't like ogres, as they often bothered him with their noise and smell. He tolerated them until they entered his cave. But when he heard their voices and the smell of the princess, he decided it was time to give them a lesson. Uzzar came out of his room and saw the ogres preparing a bonfire. He saw Zlata, who was tied up and lying on the ground. He felt that she was special. He felt her kindness and beauty. He decided that he had to save her. He growled loudly to get the ogre's attention. The ogres turned around and saw the dragon. They got scared and forgot about the gold. They took their clubs and ran towards the dragon, hoping to kill him. But they had no chance against Azar. He blew fire on them and burned them to the ground. Then he went to Zlata and untied her. He looked at her with his golden eyes and smiled. He told her in his soft and deep voice, Don't be afraid, princess, I won't hurt you. I am Azar, the dragon of this cave. I saved you from the ogres because I liked you. You are very beautiful and kind. You're not like the other people I've seen. You're special. I want to be your friend. Do you want to be my friend? Lotto was shocked by everything that happened. She couldn't believe that she had seen ogres, a dragon, and flames. She couldn't believe that the dragon was talking to her and wanted to be her friend. She looked at Azar and saw that he was not scary, but kind and sweet. She felt that he was sincere and honest. She felt that he was special. She smiled at him and said in her sweet and gentle voice, Yes, I want to be your friend. I am Zlata, the princess of this kingdom. I am grateful to you for saving me from the ogres. You are very strong and wise. You're not like the other dragons I've heard of. You are very kind and sweet. You're special. Zlata told Azar, thank you, Zlata. You're not like the other princesses I've seen either. You are very brave and inquisitive. You're special. 
Lazar told Zlata, can you show me your cave? I want to know more about you and your life, Zlata Lazar asked, of course, Zlata. I'll be happy to show you my cave, I want to share my secrets and stories with you. Azar's late agreed, Azar took Zlata on his back and flew with her through the cave. He showed her his room, where he slept and kept his treasures. He showed her his library, where he read and studied various books. He showed her his laboratory, where he experimented and created different things. He showed her his gallery, where he painted and carved various figures. He showed her his music room, where he played and sang various songs. He showed her his meditation room, where he prayed and reflected on various things. He showed her his playroom, where he played and had fun with various toys. He showed her his garden room, where he grew and tended various plants. He showed her his star room, where he observed and studied different stars. Lotta was delighted with everything she saw. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so talented and versatile. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so smart and educated. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so creative and inventive. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so spiritual and wise. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so funny and playful. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so caring and gentle. She couldn't believe that the dragon was so interesting and amazing. She asked Azar many questions about his cave, his life and his world. She listened to his answers with great interest and respect. She told him about her kingdom, her life, and her world. She made him laugh with her jokes and stories. She sang her songs to him and read her poems to him. She drew him her pictures and gave him her crafts. She played his games with him and participated in his experiments. She helped him in his garden and watched his stars. Azar and Slada had become very good friends. They spent a lot of time together and enjoyed chatting with each other. They taught each other new things and opened up new worlds to each other. They supported each other in difficult situations and rejoiced at each other in happy moments. They shared their thoughts and feelings with each other. They understood each other without words and trusted each other without doubt. They appreciated each other for what they were, but their friendship was not simple. They were from different worlds and different races. They were from different backgrounds and different cultures. They were from different eras and different stories. They were different, but they were special. They were special, but they were lonely. They were lonely, but they found each other. They found each other, but they lost others. Their friendship was not approved by their peoples. Their peoples were hostile to each other and did not understand each other. Their peoples were full of prejudice and hatred towards each other. Their peoples were full of fear and greed for each other. Their peoples were full of evil and cruelty against each other. Their peoples were dangerous to them and to their friendship. One day, when Azar and Zlata were in the cave, they heard a noise outside. They went out to see what was going on. They saw that a large group of people had approached the cave. They were soldiers of the king, Zlata's father. They came to save Zlata from the dragon. They came to kill the dragon. They came to destroy the friendship of Azar and Zlata. Zlata, you're alive, one of the soldiers exclaimed recognizing the princess. We've been looking for you everywhere. You disappeared while walking in the woods. We thought you were kidnapped by ogres, but now we've found you. You must come back to the castle with us. Your father is very worried about you. He wants to see you and no, I'm not going with you, Zlata replied. I don't want to go back to the castle. I want to stay here. I want to stay with Azar. He's my friend. He didn't kidnap me. He saved me from the ogres. He's my friend, Zlata told the soldiers. Have you lost your mind? Another soldier asked. This is not your friend. It's a dragon. He is dangerous and evil. He wants to eat you. He's the enemy of our kingdom. He must die. We have to kill him. 
He said and raised his sword. No, don't you dare touch him. Zlata screamed and rushed to Azar. He's not dangerous or evil. He's kind and sweet. He doesn't want to eat me. He's my friend. He is not an enemy of our kingdom. He must not die. You don't have to kill him. She said and hugged Azar Zlata. Get away from him. The third soldier said, he tricked you, he charmed you, he made you love him, he wants to use you, he wants to take over our kingdom, he must be destroyed, we should be destroying it. He said and fired his crossbow, no, don't do that, Azar shouted and stood in front of Zlata. She is not deceived or charmed, she is free and happy, she loves me, I love her, I don't want to use it. I don't want to take over your kingdom, I must not be destroyed. You don't have to destroy me, he said and blew fire on the arrow. The arrow burned up in there and did not reach Azar, but the dragon's fire spread through the cave and lit a bonfire on which the ogres wanted to cook gold. The bonfire flared up brightly and caused a landslide. Rocks and earth crashed down on the soldiers and ogres, they died under the rebel. Azar and Zlada are still alive. They were safe, they were together. Azar, you saved us. You saved me, you're my hero, you're my friend. You are my love, Zlada said to Azar and kissed him. Zlada, you saved us, you saved me. You're my heroine, you're my friend, you are my love. Azar said to Zlada and kissed her. They hugged and looked at each other. They saw light and warmth in each other's eyes. They saw meaning and purpose in each other's eyes. They saw themselves and each other in each other's eyes. They saw their fate and their happiness in each other's eyes. They decided that they wanted to live in their world together. And they lived happily ever after. End.